Hey folks, it's Lucid, welcome back. Got another turn for you here. <clears throat> it's uh, turn 38, I believe. And uh, you can see we got uh, kind of an Agartha little mini death basket here. Got 400 gold, got some gems. We got a hammer, which we didn't pay for. We got the robe of the sea, which we did pay for. Uh, and then we got eight fire gems from Pythian. Um, did we also get... Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, what else? Uh, we've got some battles here. We can see Gath has uh, teleported in a thug. So Gath apparently has decided uh, he's going to get on the move. So he's got this guy, 15 protection, very high MR, which means my ghosts really are never going to deal full damage to him. 21 defense, pretty good. Not terribly high attack, though. Um, and then regen etc 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 um vulnerable to magic duel is what i would say is the main thing of this guy you know expensive cap only but <coughs> and it's not a great thug chassis to be clear like it's an okay th it, it's kind of okay it's a good thug it's a weak um super combatant is probably what I would class it. Could it kill a whole army? Potentially. But, like, only really shitty stuff. Or pretty shitty stuff. Could it kill a whole ghost army? Without mage support, probably. Though a vine shield would... Whoops. Uh, would no doubt help them. So that's successful. Anyway, it's good we've got a few scouts out, because we can see kind of what Gath is doing. Um, and that is the sort of thing, too, we can tell it, like, because our guys are immortal, we can just teleport and magic duel. Um, and that's pretty efficient for us if he ever tries to use that against us. We just don't put gear on our dudes. So, uh, Marignon has decided that he is going to do Call of the Wilds, which I didn't actually, when I was watching this, I was like, there's no way that's going to work. Because I'm like, this guy... Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of protection, but he's got the awe, he's got the fear. These guys don't have very good morale. Actually, they do have pretty good morale. Okay, so they pass a fair amount of the all I thought they had shitty morale. It must be because... I mean, wolves always have morale issues. Beastmaster plus one? How do they have such good morale? Home province plus one. Led by Beastmaster plus one. Friendly dominion. How do you have friendly dominion? Oh, I get... Oh, these are owned by him. Okay, so this is his play. Okay, I got it. So it's a remote summon. So this is now their home. Then it's... It, this province is his dominion. And then led by a beast master. So anyway, that means we're going to fail... Or they're going to pass most of the all checks. Um, and then fear is not going to be super effective. Now, if he can get to life draining, he's okay. But every time he casts a spell, it's kind of bad news. And then now he's kind of... He's in trouble. Yeah. So I don't know. There's a chance it could work. I think it would work if they were in enemy dominion. Because uh, that would be minus two morale. Or it might work. Minus two morale. Uh, and then not in home province. Probably. That would be minus three total. That means all of a sudden all is going to be way more effective. Uh, and then fear potentially could work. I don't know. It's probably still a little gimmicky. Uh, we found a magic site here in um, Anarmark. Um, we got an Earthblood Sea Pitch. So this is an Earth 2 site. It's really good. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you where that is. I'll, I'm site searching mostly in my fort. So that's the other really nice thing about basically playing Lemuria is, okay, you have really bad magic diversity and stuff. But when you do find stuff, generally you're going to search your forted areas first. Uh, and so it's very secure. Like, you're you're not going to lose that income to raiding. You only lose it to, like, a very committed army attack. Uh, okay. Uh, we take... So, uh, I haven't mentioned the biggest thing of all. Which is, last turn, I had... We were setting up, like, there's going to be a big battle with Caleb, And I was planning on it. And I, I was down there looking at it, and I was just thinking to myself, well... I think I'm going to win most of the conflicts, or at least I'll cause him to also lose, and his attrition is going to be more expensive than mine. 
So I was like, okay, I'm okay with that. But then I was like, man, if he does Wrathful Sky, if he doesn't do Wrathful Skies, I would stomp him, I think. It depends a little bit on the morale checks from Wailing Winds, but if he does Wrathful Skies, I'm going to lose most of my ghosts, like four or 500. I don't know. And I don't even know. And so as I was thinking about that, I'm like, it's going to be a high, high attrition trying to fight Kalim. Potentially, I could lose the fight. There's a risk. And then he starts, like, sieging my forts. And that's something I want to avoid. But if, if I'm kind of... I'm very exposed sieging down these forts in front of him. And I think I'm set up to win those fights. But you never know. Um, and if I lose, and I lose... Like, especially if I lost both armies somehow. Like, one to a thug or super combatant that I didn't expect. And then the other one to his army. Um, anyway, if that happens we're in trouble because now he has like 400 birds who can go one turn pop forts um and i would i have enough forts where it's not like oh he has a fort under siege it's going to impact ghost recruitment so i can still build up a large army and respond but it would put me on the back foot is what i'm trying to say if that happened now it could also put me on the right foot where i kill his armies and then i take all of agartha but i'm like I don't know. I, I got thinking about it. And so then what occurred to me is I don't even really know whether Kalem wants to kill me. He did all this Diplo pressuring where he was basically telling Pythium he would attack Pythium if Pythium doesn't attack me. He was telling Agartha he would attack Agartha if Agartha didn't attack me. And then he said he attacked Agartha because Agartha wasn't attacking me and that way he would be able to attack me. So this is all this like public. That was why I attacked him right off the bat. Like, I didn't let him conquer Agartha. I was trying not to let him. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, he did it anyway, but... Um, but I didn't know that that was really what he wanted. And so, anyway, it's clear now Agartha was going to fall. Or last turn, it was clear Agartha was going to fall. And so what I asked him was, okay, do you are you planning on, like, invading and crushing me? Like, if, is that, if that's your goal, then, like, there's nothing for us to talk about. But, you know, you had a profitable gain on Agartha. If you don't feel like we need to fight immediately, then maybe... Because he's busy trying to siege down Agartha's cap, too. And I, was, I had my army here last turn, but... Um, but, yeah, if, you, if you're not actually planning on, like, a deep invasion, then we can probably come to an agreement about borders. Because I'm not principally opposed to attacking you. I mean, to having you as a neighbor. I just, like, all the Diplo you were doing suggested you were going to attack me immediately. And so he was like, yeah, actually, that was mostly just, uh, uh, you know, like a good... Like, I, I want to get people to attack you, but uh, that was mostly just a pretty good justification for a favorable war, which is kind of what I thought the whole time. Um, I mean, I do think he kind of wanted to attack me, but I also think... Now that I'm disentrenched, it's probably not terribly appealing to him. And it was a really good matchup for him. So, anyway. Um, going against Agartha. So what we decided is to make peace. And the, the agreement we came to was that he's going to get this, which is high income. Or at least it is now. He needs to preach and get my dominion out. Um, which presumably he knows. Um... So he's going to get this, but I'm going to get this and this. And this province was his the turn before, so that's a little bit of a swap. So he's going to get this kind of uh, knife edge into what was Agartha, but includes Agartha's cap. And I'm basically going to get this, this, and this. Um, and then also I got this from Agartha. So I'm going to get two forts out of the deal in two provinces, and he's going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did I count right? Three, yeah, seven, uh, eight. So he gets eight provinces out of it. So uh, I think that's a pretty good deal for me. I get four, he gets seven. I mean, he does get Agartha's cap, but um, I was pretty happy with that. That said, I think he wouldn't have given me that initially, but I would have killed, if he moved to this army, I don't think he has a way to protect against Foul Vapors yet. Um... So, I'm pretty sure his whole army would have died if he attacked me. Because I would have had double fatigue traps up in both... Or no. 
at least one fatigue trap up in both in, in each of these. So rare mortis and foul vapors um, and darkness. That would have been up this turn in both of these. So I oh in this turn this turn it would have been solar eclipse. Next turn it would have been darkness. Uh, and that would fuck his army. Like the fact that he has magic weapons would no longer matter because he doesn't have any attack score. I mean, it would matter, but not much. Uh, so then is it like, is it a good fight for me to take? Well, I would much rather entrench down here and then keep expanding. The problem with this, the problem with expanding down here is this is so close to my dominion that anything I conquer is going to immediately get swallowed up in my dominion. I would much rather fight farther away from my dominion too. Um, I also got a console. Okay, so let's go through the turn and then we'll talk about kind of what's happening. Um, we, this is us just moving into the cave. Uh, this is, uh, Atlantis taking some barbs that raided him, but these guys are now importantly positioned. That's where this battle happens. Um, they're positioned right here, which means they can raid me here next turn. Um, there's a battle in Imicton, and so this is the, uh, Atlantis army coming in. Uh, and he's got a lot of mages, and then a pretty good amount of, uh, troop support. And then you can see he's got a straight line of crossbows here. Don't really understand the crossbows. I think the crossbows are a horrible, horrible, horrible idea on Atlantis. Here's the thing. A lot of your troops, like, these guys have shields, so they're kind of more immune to the crossbow fire. But he's attacking me in heat. These guys are going to get, tra like, he'll, let's say, he let's say these guys are in contact with the enemy and he shoots crossbows at him. Like, the crossbows are going to shred his own troops. That's a horrible, horrible, hor like, these are minus units when you're attacking Lemuria, basically. Unless you have flaming arrows, which, let's see if he's planning on putting that up. Because they do have fire mages, but you'd have to jump in a communion and do it. I'm going to have Aerofin, too. The uh, Homeboy doesn't know what's up. Yeah, he's about to get completely fucked. Completely fucked. Um, but that said, I don't have an army here at the moment. And this army did, because he does have... All, all these mages doing cleansing water, they can kill a lot of ghosts per turn. Um, yeah. And I can't, you know, we can't thug or super combat in this. All right, these guys would murder any single unit I send at them. So, what do we do? That is a reasonable question. Well, um... We'll talk about that in a minute, but I have a I have a meme for you for that uh, that explains my plan, my grand master plan. Um, here we're just raiding. Here we're raiding. Here we fight uh, Enchilados, uh, and this actually goes a little worse than I thought it would. I'm kind of glad I brought as many troops as I did because if I brought how many I was planning on bringing originally, I'd be fucked. Now, don't let this fool you into thinking that uh, tar that ghosts are good against this guy. He didn't cast any spells at the beginning. But if he did, you know, like Fire Shield and Phoenix Pyre or Soul Vortex, like just Soul Vortex, it's a good game. There's no way I can kill this guy with Soul Vortex on him with normal ghosts. I have to then have like specially designed consoles or I have to do Drain Life Spam. It's just not easy. So now he's paralyzed, but... Okay, well, we've got him a little surrounded. He's taking some damage. But every once in a while he wakes up and kills a bunch of people. He does have a lot of protection, though. So it, it takes a while. And there he goes. Uh, some of the reason it took so long is he's surrounded by so many of these guys. But they did make him sleep. And uh, that meant we lost fewer than we otherwise might have. Actually, we didn't lose that much. We, most of it was dispossessed spirits, so that's not bad. Uh, here we are attacking Agartha inside his fort, and this is the army potentially Caleb could have walked into because we made peace. Oh, we also made a nap too. Um, and with the condition, because I'm getting close to having, I have a lot of thrones near me. Um, he can instantly cancel it if he just lets me know in Discord if there's a credible reason where it looks like I'm going for a throne rush. You know, like, whatever. Uh, I get one. There's, I only have one throne left, right? Or I move an army, and I'm I have big armies adjacent to all the thrones. If there's any credible thing for a throne rush, 
I mean, he could just break it. I told him, you know, you can just break it if, I, if you actually think I'm turn rushing. But then I was like, well, just tell me in Discord. But, um, and that way you don't have to do it at, like, the absolute last minute. You know, like... If he actually thinks I'm throne rushing, then tell me, and then we'll, that'll be the end of our nap. And so anyway, that way he gets to do it and not feel like he's breaking a nap. Uh, back here we have a bunch of, or a fair amount of priests. These are attendants to the oracle, I think, or attendant of the dead. And then some normal priests and some guys. They're going to kill some ghosts before they go down, but maybe not so many. Now goes the dust to dust. Thought Vapor's probably not needed here, but I just wanted to put it up. I hadn't, I didn't really know how much he had inside for mage support. If he summoned a lot of fire elementals or something and it went really far south, it's good to have Foul Vapor's up, but... I didn't send in some of my human mages and stuff I would have normally sent in, because I didn't want him to get burned by Foul Vapor's. So anyway, we lost 60 dudes. But, uh, pretty good for killing, like, 15 mages or priests who can, you know kill your ghost pretty fast um, and then here we go and he's pinging what is left inside of Agartha this is Kalem a bottle of water here I mean a bottle of mercury yeah this guy's gonna get wrecked um, So that was that. Um, so here, there is uh, the ancient ruins. It spawned another one of these uh, these events because uh, I had a a mage there, and uh, yeah, basically what what happens with this event? This is the second time it's happened in this game. We get gold, we get two items, um, and then there's an assassination attempt, and we get the items whether we win the assassination attempt or not, which is nice, of course. Uh, and then here is the assassin. I forget what it was. Oh, it's an apparition this time. But uh, Vince Song cares basically none at all. It's like, hey, you want to come on our side? You want a full-time position? Uh, and then for more events, we got some water gems, we got some air gems, and we got some nature gems. And then misfortune spread. We don't like that. So that's that. Um, now... There are a few things that are happening. One is that Pythium has told me that Atlantis is going to attack here, which would mean it's this army. Um, Pythium has also... I had told Pythium that he can have this part of Marignan. Now, what I did not know at the time when I told him that was that the statue of the sitting god is here, which is a 20 enchantment bonus, which liches are something that we are interested in too because they are ways to get our death magic off without worrying about uh, magic duel. So, liches are pretty important, and this will help us a lot with them. Also, liches are cheap. Um, like, if I want to get a Grand Lemur out, it's 50. But if I want to get a Lich out, it's uh, it's only 30. So, I may have to fight him for this. The problem with doing Lichcraft here, and it may not be worth the 20 uh, discount, is that they're now, now tied here, and this is like the hardest part. Like, this is super fringe on my empire, so I don't think I would actually summon liches there, because they're the thing with the mortals is if you take their home province, then they're not immortal anymore. So, but there's an, uh, an earth blood vein and a burial mound. I kind of want it. Um... So we'll see. I what I expect to happen next turn is these army this army is gonna move here and this army is gonna move here. Meanwhile, he's got a bunch of dudes on here, which So if we looked at the battle report, it's 164 dudes. 
this fort only has 250 siege defense, right? So scary, huh? 160 guys? That's like a two-turn pop, right? Nope. He did 60 damage. That's because we have 155 siege defense. I'm not even sure how he did that much. Some of these guys must have pretty high strength. Yeah, like that guy counts as multiple. These guys count as two. Yeah, these guys count as two and two and a half. That's the only reason it's so many. Or it's, yeah. This is probably like a 200 siege strength army he has there at least. Probably like 210. Uh, but let me let me show you my plan. So here's my plan. Um, this is my fort. Uh, this is the Atlantis army sitting on top of it. And we have time, right? You know, he's camping out on our fort and we're going to formulate a response. And so we're just going to, we're going to pull just, just like this. We're just going to pull that golf club back. And then in a couple turns, all right, and that, this is, this is basically the, the Lemurian battle plan. Right, come camp out on top of my fort. Take his now. This fort, he's not even starving because there's a, it's full population. But normally it would be like starve on top of my fort because I stashed a shit ton of ghosts in there last turn. Starve on top of my fort, and I will take my time to formulate the perfect response, and then. Poof. So yeah, that's that's basically our battle plan here. So we're hoping he just decides to camp out. Now one problem, and I don't know if he's scouted it, is I have a Palisades coming up here. So we're not very excited about that. We're gonna go ahead and move these guys over here. Um, and basically what we're doing is we're just consolidating a ton of troops over in this direction. One of the things I did is I put the stone idol here so that hopefully I keep my dominion out of Flegger, but honestly, Flegger is fucked. It's got too many candles, the population's already too low. I can't remember if this turn, I think this turn I go ahead and move I don't know. Basically, it's going to go here or here. These are both very high uh, dominion, I mean, high population provinces. So we'll probably try to kick our dominion out of here and here when it goes next. Um, all this stuff we're going to despoil. And we are going to claim the throne of bureaucracy now. It's been a long time, but now uh, basically I just want my dominion, especially as Arco falls, I just want my dominion to spread out here because this, this is going to be a really hard fight with Gath. So I don't look at this land as like stuff I want to conquer and it's going to be a source of income for me. I mean, sure it could be, but primarily uh, I want to, it's going to be Gaths. And so I just wanted to spoil it. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on and that's going to increase my Dom push everywhere. It's going to piss people off, but at this point I don't really care. I'm pretty big. Um... Now, there was a ton of thought that went into kind of some of the logistics uh, for this turn. Like, we're getting our god over here. Um, I've got these guys coming down here. I've got... So we're going to have a fair amount of mages positioned here and here. I don't want them to know the big fight's going to come, so we're not going to position an army right next to them. Um, and we're making Boots of the Messenger and Snake Rings. And the reason is because if we do Foul Vapors over here, we're going to have to protect our mages. The thing I didn't think about um, is that I probably want to use these crossbow. And so I'm probably not actually going to do Foul Vapors. Foul Vapors was one of the main reasons I'm bringing my god. But I'll just, I'll use my god for other stuff. He's got a ton of stuff he can do. Um, but yeah, I think that, so we're... Yeah, we're, we're setting all this up. We've got lots of gems. Um, next, we'll just go to next turn. This this turn's mostly a setup. Oh, the other thing over here, we're going to... We killed this. This is a fort. We'll watch this real quick. This army's going to go on top of Marignan now. Now, Marignan's in a tough position because his army is not strong enough to take my army. So, he could have rode out and fought me. The problem with that... There's a, potentially a few problems with that. One problem with that is he may have some research target coming up, which if he gets there before he has to fight me, means he potentially could win. That's one thing. You know, the second thing is... Uh, he wants to fight me with every advantage he can, so like maybe he wants to use his PD, maybe he wants to use the archers on the wall in his fort. 
but he's definitely not going to get any of those advantages fighting me on top of some other four that I'm already on right now. Um, but the problem with doing this and just sitting in your base is you basically just give me everything else uh, for free. So I'm just taking it for free right now. And that's basically the plan. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, that's the other major thing that's happening. Oh, the final major thing that's happening is we're moving to attack this horror. Now, I make a mistake here. Um, Balbu, I assume, is zero protection, and I'm thinking because I have magic weapons, we'll kill him. Uh, but we're going to find out next turn that indeed Balbu... Uh, he's got 20 protection, which means I, my ghosts basically do no damage. Uh, so, whoops. Anyway, um, that is going to be pain for another turn. Um, so let's go ahead and pull that up. Uh, and this is our current turn. Let's see Gath on, on here, hard at work. Um, we got a final bit of the... I, I haven't gotten real Death Basket stuff in a long time. This feels, it feels kind of nice, man. Especially when it comes from, like, a real ally, and I was trying to help them. I generally don't support... I don't really give Death Baskets. I'll give something sometimes flavorful when I die, like, five gems to every person on the map. Um, or, like, one little trinket to every person on the map or something. You know, something like a party favor. Um, and this isn't much more. I think... I mean, I got some... I know it's more. It's more, but it's not a big death. A big death basket's when you get like a hundred gems or something, you know, um, which can totally happen. But those are not very cool, I think, because they really unbalance the game. This is, this feels okay. And I'm, I'm fighting everybody, so, but it, not Caleb now. So anyway, the same thing here. These wolves come and murder my PD, which is upsetting. Here, they still have pretty good morale. They... Wait, how do they still have home province? Oh, did he cast it again? Wait. This is magic phase. Can these guys all stealth? That means these idiots stealth somewhere. I didn't even realize that. That's protected, at least. I might need to do a bit more PD in places. I don't even know where he went. Lava Lake? That would be a little upsetting to lose. I kind of feel like this one would be shitty to lose. We might jack this up to, like, 10. My Dominion's also started spreading here. So uh, I've got the Scout with the Stone Idol. He's here. But the more I think about it, I think I want to protect this. This is going to have reasonably high unrest after the battle here. But uh, we'll finish watching the events and we'll talk about what we're going to do. Uh, we found some magic sites. We got uh, two Death 1 sites, a Burial Mound and a Battlefield. And then we found an Ice Brick Tower. This is a Water 1 site. So that's pretty sweet. We got three gems this turn. If we look at graphs for gem income... See, we're doing pretty good lately. Okay, wait. I thought we were. What the fuck was this? What was that? Was that this? Oh, I guess we're finding gems, but we're losing... We lost all these. Okay, so I need to get this stuff back, is I think what it comes down to. Shit, this Atlantis rating is... I was like, oh, we've had good gym income, but really, we're just catching up for some of the Atlantis rating. So, uh, Atlantis has attacked me here. He's attacked me here. He's attacked me here. He just run, takes out PD. Um, here, we fight Balabu the Horror. We end up killing him, but uh, it is not clean, and a bunch of our army runs away. Now, this guy I had scripted to do Drain Life. And I thought that worked against Tars. Uh, and I don't know why it's not working. They're not undead. 
Yeah, I'm not sure why Drain Life wasn't going. Yeah, he's not doing Drain Life at all. Which is a little... I guess Jimmy just didn't trigger either. Oh, that's why he's not doing Drain Life. I had him do Power of the Sphere, so I guess this guy wasn't enough to trigger Jimmy use. But anyway, if I was doing Drain Life, we probably would have killed him. Uh, so anyway, he ends up routing most of my army. We're not going to sit here and watch all of it. He's just doing things that Haris do. Uh, and then as we're running... So he's still pretty... He's pretty high HP, but a little afflicted. Um... I don't know if it's this guy. It might be Bobo. But he's taking a lot more damage now. I don't know what it's from. Oh, maybe it's not here. How afflicted is he? Yeah, pretty afflicted. Anyway, he's about to... My armies are about to run. He's about to die. Maybe it's just the skeletons that hit him? I have no idea. Maybe it's that he can't drain life off the skeletons, because the skeletons are lifeless. Oh, arcane bolt? <laughs> nice. So anyway, we barely fucking kill him. That's embarrassing, really. Oh well, what are you going to do? Um, we killed it, but unfortunately a ton of our guys routed. That was here. Um... We are very successfully raiding Marignan. Um, Satis suicides a guy to twice born him. Um, we attack Marignan's capital, and we are successful. There's nothing out here. We, we put these bottles of mercury on some of the consoles towards the front. And the idea they'll kind of wade into the front lines and cause tons of pain and suffering. Here we can see Bogarus taking one of his forts back, and it was not defended by Satis, so this means it was probably negotiated. So I think Bogarus has negotiated to get all of his previous forts back from the vultures. Uh, and then here we can see the armies of Kalem going on Agartha. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure what these guys do. So the armies of Kalem land here, but they, they're not making very quick work of the... Um, of these uh, heavy infantry, which put on fast. And so the flame eruptions here... are magma eruption... Is that what it is? Anyway, the evocations from the mage do a ton of damage, but... Meanwhile, um, they're kind of all their troops are dying up here. So, and Kalem has put up Wailing Winds. So a lot of the mages, even though they weren't killed, are just kind of saying peace. Um, and the banishment's pretty effective. There's a bunch of dudes back here that are making their own undead. The crossbows are shooting. And it's kind of just like, yeah, these guys have run now. So the tides of war are kind of shifting. And then these guys run... Just long battles with Wailing Winds up. And it's really hard to win if you're using normal troops. This is kind of why I thought there was no way Agartha had a real shot against Kalem. Because Agartha doesn't... To, to, one of the ways to fight Wailing Winds is you need to kill stuff quickly. There's just not many ways to do that. I sent him Fire Gems, though. I wonder why he didn't do... Uh, he needed to make the little fire ponies. Those would have done pretty good. Potentially. The little uh, explosive barrel ponies. Uh, and then for events, um, air and earth gems. Uh, earth gems, very nice. Tent owner. Caught some scouts. One thing I'm going to try to do more now that I, the war with Kalem has simmered down and my demand for troops is not quite so high. Um, we're going to try to patrol more. I want to get all the scouts out of my lands. Uh, so that's one of the things I put in this turn. Waywinkle is back. Uh, he lost an arm. Uh, but that will come back. 
Um, there's some little micro things too I'll just mention that we're doing. Like I've moved all the items that were on this guy when he side searched this for water and nature. We've moved them up here. We're going to site search this for water and nature. Just small little efficiency things to get my site searching going okay. Um, we claimed this throne this turn. Uh, the, the throne of the moon. So people have correctly worked out. For a while, people were saying I had three thrones. They didn't know I actually had four. But anyway, Caleb at least has correctly worked out that I have four, which I think should be obvious to everybody. So we might as well go ahead and claim them when it's to our advantage. I didn't want to push Dominion, but now I do. Um, because people are going to have to keep my Dominion out, and that's going to cause them to invest resources and stuff, and it's also, to the degree they fail at it, it's going to just push Dominion into their lands, which I'm also okay with. And then this particular throne is just going to generate a huge amount of Dominion pressure in and of itself. It's basically five temples, uh, which, if you didn't know, five is a pretty big number. And so it's going to just burst Dominion into the lands of Arco. Uh, and now that Arco is no longer Arco, as you can see, the armies of uh, Gath have been moving all around. There's a big fort here, and there's this little fort here, and then Gath has a very scary army now. We can see it's got Gibbers and Seir, mostly Seir. So Gath has a pretty big blood economy going. So that's one of the things I'm going to have to potentially look to shut down. Um... And there's ways to do it. We'll have to figure out the best way. Um, the easiest thing I can probably do, because I probably want to go ahead and scout it. Shit. We only need 10 here, do we? Until it'd be kind of nice. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and get a scout. We'll sacrifice a scout over in here. And he'll just find it like it's patrolling, not like I'm pinging it. And I just want to see what his uh, blood hunting protection is, because we're probably going to need to hit his blood hunting. Because uh, I don't want to fight a shit ton of seer, really. Um, not really at all. They are going to have a shit ton of siege strength, too. Uh, I can't pull them up, but they're really high strength, so... Yeah, this is probably... 600 siege strength, I would say, this army at least. Um, but uh, I guess not quite enough to one turn pop this fort. But it's definitely going to be popped next turn. We've got a guy camping out there. Um, we already went through all the events. Well, Okay, so what happened? These these guys, they raided me here, but they dodged it. I was hoping they would come this way, so I tried to intercept them. Anyway, we'll follow behind them. We'll just see what happens. Um, these guys could all die. That's okay. Here, we're going to pull back. I do want to take this. Here, we're going to chase these guys around, which is fine. We've got 10 PD, which is enough to deal with wolves. I put 10 PD here, too, in case they do stupid wolf things. Um, I've got a decision to make. Uh, if I sit on top of this fort one more turn, I'll pop it. It's a uh, 1,000 wall strength, but I've got 640 dudes. He's got an army of about 200 inside, which is going to have a siege defense of about 100. Um, maybe like 130. So I think we'll still one turn pop it. And then with these guys moving on top, I think that will be enough to like edge it over. Uh, Atlantis could potentially consolidate his army on top of here, but that would be, uh, I would say, highly unwise. Um, yeah, what I expect Atlantis is going to do is he could one turn pop this fort if he moves both of these guys here. But then it's like, do I want to fight him or do I want to take Marignan? And I would probably choose to take Marignan, which would give him this, but then I would just take this from him the next turn. Um, which I think I would prefer to do because this is a shit province gives no income, it gives no gems. This is a nice province. It gives a lot of income and it gives, you know. Holy shit, I forgot this thing had. It's like kind of decimating my armies. Yeah, we need to, that's just gonna. Strengthen me in my position that we need to stay on top of this fort. 
I don't want to be jumping on and off this fort if it's got this kill on dead thing on it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to camp out here and take it. If he wants to take this, he's he can be my guest. We'll take that back in a heartbeat. Um, but, yeah, it, he, the other thing he could do, and I think this is the smarter move, because I'll just kill this army. I mean, I, I could, if I wanted to, not take it and then go to... Anyway, the smarter thing, I think, is for him to go ahead and take this fort and build up some scary force that then I might actually think twice about running into because these guys are going to murder this army. Uh, either way, we're just going to sit here for now. We're going to chill out. Um, yeah, that's basically the plan. The interesting thing for this turn... Oh, they sent... This is actually funny. I didn't show you the battle for this because it just seemed like, yeah, Atlantis is raiding me. So here I had Scassius before, um, and he wanted to take it, but he doesn't have a lot of troops, and he doesn't want to send a few guys for Scassius, because Scassius could get, you know, a few lucky rolls and kill everybody to win. Um, so anyway, he wanted to do some water elemental support, and so he sends this guy with eight water elementals, but Scassius isn't here, it's just PD. So he ends up spending eight water gems on water elementals. Uh, whoops. Would have wrecked Scassius, but anyway, so now Scassius um, gives zero fucks about uh, this army. Uh, not zero fucks. He, he probably would get killed by them. Let's just be real. But he's got pretty good defense. There's a good chance they miss. And then he gets a couple life drain attacks. and he could, he could totally kill this. But he could also totally die. Anyway, we're going to send these guys in and attack. Um, meanwhile, um, it is time to release the golf club. We have uh, positioned enough troops in striking range. We have inside here about 300 troops, uh, about 250 uh, troops that aren't dispossessed spirits. Here we've got about 120. Here we've got about, uh, about 200. And then here we've got about 300. And anyway, we're going to consolidate all of them right here. Uh, I've got my pretender god off my porch here. And uh, I, I what my plan was to foul vapors this, but then I realized I'm going to be sending in these crossbows, and I don't have a way to do poison or serpent's blessing or whatever to give everybody poison resistance. So then the question becomes this: Do I not send in 90 archer, 90 crossbowmen because I want to foul vapors army? Because I'm not going to foul vapors my own crossbowmen. Option one. Option two: I just don't do foul vapors. Uh, and I choose option two. What I choose to do is just do flaming arrows, which is going to be very good because, uh, don't forget, all my guys have javelins. Um, and this is going to dramatically increase the damage of the javelins. Dramatically. Um, this is going to be, uh, how, how should we describe it? This is going to be like, like in the Old West, when a drunk walks into a police station and starts like taking punches at officers, right? And all the police officers just come out and beat the shit out of the drunk. That's what this battle is going to be like. Um, my estimate, because he has a lot of mages, so we're going to be doing cleansing waters, and I can't stop that damage from happening. You know, like the drunk is going to get some punches off. Um, but with heat from hell going up pretty soon, and then flaming arrows and wind guide, and then relief, it's going to be... Ooh... It's going to be complete destruction. My guess is I lose 200 ghosts. That is my guess. That is my guess. Um, we also have Arrowfin coming out, so of course I'm going to be less likely to cause friendly fire. And then Arrowfin on top of Ghost, when, remember he's also got 100 crossbowmen. It's going to turn his crossbowmen into an extreme liability in the sense that and they're not going to be able to do anything. Now, let's not do hold and fire. Well, 
his mages are literally in the same line as his archers. We I don't know if you remember, but he has a line of archers and he literally dots his mages in the line of the archers. So I think we still are going to stay on holding fire archers. Um Dude, These guys are really low morale. I think I have to do box formation. Wait, is there somebody else? Wait, who's on Okay, these guys are plus one morale. Why are these guys so low? Oh, it's the friendly dominion. So we'll actually be in friendly dominion up here. Okay, so the morale is not going to be as huge of an issue. Uh, well, we're going to go back to skirmish then. Because I think some of the morale issues are going to go away. This is basically, we're basically going to get plus two. Um, so we'll be at eight. That's probably okay. We'll have Arafin. We're not going to be taking a lot of damage. Um, I don't know how... Fr Heat from Hell is going to cause some friendly fire and that it can ignite people and we are going to be in heat. So it will ignite some of my own troops and some of them will burn to death, basically. Um, but it's not going to be intense. Like, I don't think... I don't use Heat from Hell that much. I don't play a lot of Heat Nations. Um, I probably don't use it as much as I should. And I've used it before. I just... I know it sets people on fire, but I don't think it's a ton. I think it's... Well, I think we'll be okay. Um, also, everybody's going to start off blessed because my god's here, which can be nice. Um, but yeah, uh, let's talk about our Death Mages. Um, Sakune is going to be casting Power of the Spheres and then Rigor Mortis. And Castronomical, who's going to be my main man for this fight, because he is the Astral Death variety. Or he's the Death variety, not the Air Random like Sakune. Sakune is going to be doing, like, PG stuff, right? Rigor Mortis. Darkness is 400 fatigue and requires 4 gems. This is 300 fatigue, requires 3 gems. So. Sakune after Power of the Sphere is going to be death 4. He's then going to drop 4 gems on Rigor Mortis. And uh, that will be that. Uh, it's not going to be a ton of fatigue. But in this case with Castronomical, he's going to drop Power of the Spheres. Be death 5. Then he'll probably put 2 or 3 gems in this. Skeletal Legion. Which in conjunct... Because remember I'm fighting crossbows and then people with spears. Um... Yeah, it's going to mean I take no damage from troops. And then he's going to drop Darkness. Now, Darkness is a better spell than Skeletal Legion, and it's going to affect the mages. Fuck. Maybe I switched the order. I think we switched the order. Thing is, Skeletal Legion is not going to make me pass out. Darkness is going to knock this guy out. But he's going to be death 5, casting with 5 gems. So it's going to be a basically a... It's going to be reduced to a third. He'll probably wake up after not that long. We don't need Skeletal Legion, guys. Let's not kid ourselves. Let's save some death gems, okay? We don't need that. The, we're already, with Darkness up, we're going to be immune to the troops. Um, archers are going to be worthless. We don't really need Skeletal Legion. Skeletal Legion, I think, would be worth it versus Kalem. But it can potentially disease my mages and disease my... I mean, disease my god is not a big deal because we've got recuperation. But I think it's more trouble than it's worth. And getting Darkness off one turn sooner, and if we just miss more of the Cleansing Water shots... It's going to be a lot more effective than Skeletal Legion will. So I think that's... Anyway, that's what we're doing. We've, we've made an executive decision. Um, and I think that's it. We'll just leave them on advance and cast spells. That's fine. Uh, and then here we've got turn one Arrowfend, which is going to help for the Arrow Barrage. There's not going to be a lot of magic negates, MR negates stuff. So anti-magic here is more like a nice to have. Uh, most of his stuff is going to be armor negating damage, which is not going to have an MR check. 
But you basically still want to put this up every time if you're Lemuria. Yeah? If, if like there's one priest, it's almost worth it. So, and he does have a couple priests that could be doing some banishment, but less important than Arrowfend is my point. And Arrowfend is almost more to keep my flaming arrow javelins and archers from hitting my own stuff. Uh, for troop scripting, we've got two lines of people on attack rear. Then we've got a bunch of people on fire. Fire. Um, the second wave, the people who start... Basically, it's the first wave is attack rear, attack rear, fire, fire, fire. Second wave, hold an attack now. Hold an attack rear. Hold and fire, hold and fire, hold and fire. Hold, last one is hold an attack rear for a final rear assault. That gives me maximum spacing out of my units because they're going to kind of go in volleys. They're going to go in waves. First wave is going to charge in. Second wave is going to get close, waste two turns throwing javelins, then attack. Next wave is going to wait two turns, then attack. Um, and so it'll end up getting kind of close, but it should still be behind the fire wave. Uh, then this wave... Well, I think this... This, I think, is the fire wave. Fire, fire, and then attack again. Yeah. It's going to be a massacre, guys. Um, these idiots doing cleansing water are probably going to get, like, four shots off. And with those four shots, they'll probably each kill, like, ten ghosts. So it's still going to be, like, 200 ghosts. But um, the other thing is my crossbows are going to murder them. Because they're all standing in there with the mages. So... Uh, hopefully only half of them get their full salvo of, of shots off. And that's kind of one of the reasons I didn't want to do Foul Vapors, because then I wouldn't bring my archers, is the archers are going to clear out the mages much faster than Foul Vapors will. Foul Vapors, I think, if I'm bringing a human unit, I mean... It's kind of it's kind of like it's going to be good if I'm kind of losing the fight, right? Or if I have otherwise nothing which is going to like here this fight in Agartha uh, the previous turn where I attacked here. I didn't risk anything really. You know, like there was nothing there that could have gotten hurt, so why not do foul vapors? If they, you know, cuz it basically kind of guarantees the win or guarantees a high amount of attrition. But here I want like a quick win. Anyway, we're not doing it. Uh, even though that was the main reason we brought our god. Next up, um, because Gath is quickly conquering Arco, we are going to go ahead and get in on the spoils. Now, this one, you know, this one should be mine. Uh, I'm also quite certain that once Gath conquers Arco, he's going to attack me. Uh, I have no illusions about this. I mean, he's got these guys getting ready to go underwater. We've got maybe a turn or two, but um, yeah, we're not very stoked about that. So potentially I start raiding to slow down how quickly he can take this. And the other potentially is I can move like a fatigue play army in here to like knock him off Arco's cap. Um... Because Sakane too is the player for this, and he's not a terribly aggressive player, but he's very good. And like he, I've I've never seen him kicked out of a game because he lost. Uh, he's seen me kicked out of games because I've lost. So he's pretty conservative, and I think I'm a bit more aggressive. Um. But he will also. Like, so, if I were him, I would probably be attacking me now already. I'd be like, yeah, sorry, you're not going to have this. But, I I, I mean, I might not. Because I also would really want to finish this war with Arco unmolested. But I think I want to hit him in the blood economy. I need to see what he's got here. Then I'll probably teleport in a super combatant type dude to kill everybody. Um... And then we'll just probably be raiding over here. 
However, once I do that, there's a decent chance Calum is going to restart his war. So I've, I've got to be a little careful. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I want to have more information. And I probably want to carve out a little bit of the Arco spoils for myself. So that's mostly what's going on. I, I wonder if it... Okay, let's look. Because our siege strength now is uh, 649. Mark turn is unfinished and exit. I'll just mark it as finished. Let me go back and look at the other turn. I want to see how many people we had in the previous... Um, the previous installation or iteration of that army. Okay, yeah, everybody's moving here, 720. Oh, we lost kind of a lot of guys. So if this was 720, now we lost 70 dudes. In the fight, we lost basically 10. Um, or 14 total. So we, we lost about 55 to the, to this site. Holy shit. So 25% of my guys are going to get hit by... 10 armor negating damage, but it's MR negates. So I have to fail basically the the first thing, the MR check. I mean the 25% check, and then I have to fail the MR check. Okay. Which we're gonna have decent MR here. Because it's not magic skills, which turns out to be actually good for us. Um, so yeah, it probably hits a quarter and then probably like, uh, at least a third of a quarter, probably a bit more. Yeah. It's going to kill a lot of undead a turn. I got to siege this thing down fast. We're definitely not getting off it. Once we've started knocking it down, that's, and actually the more I think about it, the more I think, let's not uh, mess around here. Let's. Let's send a Timu up here. Well, no, I actually, I think I want a Timu over here. Um, and he doesn't have a preacher now too, so I've got to fix his script again. Okay, and then these guys. Just put them on fire and then somewhere up towards the front. Okay, so they're going to come over here. And this guy needs... Okay, he's got guard commander. Because we're going to need a bit more siege strength. Because we're probably... This is going to drop down... By probably another 50. So... At that point, we'll be at 600. But then we're going to gain... 40 from here, and then most of this. We'll probably gain like 60 from this. So that'll be another 100. Okay, that should pop it, and then we get to attack. But then the next turn, we're still the, we're going to get hit again, even the turn we have, and then we have to get our army the fuck out of there. This will be an interesting fort to defend, because we don't want to put anybody near it. We'll just have them nearby and have them kick stuff off of it when they attack. Um... We are a little vulnerable, and then we only have one dude here. If he dies, this army is kind of uh, in a bad way. Anyway, I think it's okay. But that's basically 
What's going on this turn? We got a big battle coming here. We're dancing with Atlantis up here. Uh, we're gonna try to get some of, oh, I didn't show you what I'm actually doing here. We're gonna try to get some of the Arco spoils. I basically got a reasonably sized army moving in here. Uh, we've got these clockwork cars I got from an event that are gonna be up at the front. We're gonna be doing anti-magic because that's gonna help a little bit if there's a super combatant first, their astral shield and stuff like that. Uh, and then summon an air elemental advancing cast spells. This guy's gonna do power of the spheres, soul vortex advancing cast spells. Uh, he, this will basically, it should default him to, uh, drain life casting, and then, yeah, this guy's gonna cast Swarm and hopefully mess up with their, uh, their script a bit, because I'm expecting him to send some idiots on top of this fort. If he doesn't, uh, this should be enough to one turn pop it, and then we'll go inside and take it. Um, and we may take this and this. Then we'll see. Can these guys, how far can you make it? Let's. Uh, I can't, one thing I can't do that I wish I could do, because I can't really send thugs in versus these guys, but I would love to, to magic phase more with my consoles. I'd love to show you that. But the people I'm fighting now are not very vulnerable to, to magic phase, because they have death mages. But potentially Gath I can do it more with, because like even his sacred troops and stuff, if I have the right gear, I can probably kill them. But what I can't handle is dust to dust. It only takes one death mage and I basically can't thug into it. Um, I do want to get this for it too, but yeah, we can't, we can't slow down. We've got to go, got to go, 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 go on top of this fort. So that's basically it. Uh, I'll see you next time. Uh, should be a very, very cool turn next turn. I know I said that last turn, or last episode, and then I ended up chickening out of the fight with Calum. Um, but there's going to be no chickening out with Atlantis. Atlantis, we are going to pay the iron price. Cheers.